Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 3rd March 2019. I am Sagar Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, and more importantly, how it may help in your trading, you may visit the website superiorprofit.co. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on Superior Profit's trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual in today's topics, we will look at oil and gold, these two commodities using technical charts. They tend to impact related stocks. In general, when swing trading stocks, we like to trade in the direction of the market. We'll study that using NASDAQ and NYSE market bread and technical analysis of the market ETFs. In addition to aligning the trades with the market's direction, we like to align them with industry strength. We'll study industry strength from QH industry scorecard and heat map. Along the way, we may review some of the recent trade ideas shared in our traders forum and look for potential trades for the coming week. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. We begin our commodities analysis using oil. We are looking at the oil ETF USO using weekly backdrop chart and daily hop on chart. Together we call this at a glance template because this template helps you to decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity at the right edge in only a few seconds. Oil displayed a bullish headwind at the very bottom. Since then it is going up. This week's candle color is remaining bullish, cyan, however the candle shape is mixed. It is neither bullish nor bearish. This week price drop that is shown by the red color activity bar in the weekly chart. In the daily chart, last week price closed very close to the upper boundary line. Looking at that in previous market roundup, I mentioned that we were not going to take a long position in oil. That analysis was useful because since then oil couldn't go up anymore. On Monday it displayed a bearish headwind signal. After that price tried to go up but then fell again on Friday with very high activity. Friday's candle color is bearish, magenta, the shape is also bearish. There is no long trade setup and because price is very close to the support memory line, we are not going to take any short trade either. Gold ETF GLD Last week in the weekly market roundup, I mentioned that the weekly candle shape was bearish. Though price closed higher from one week ago, the shape was bearish. In Q technique, we are always cautious when we see a candle with long upper tail or lower tail. Upper tail in this case, that was bearish and we would be careful about taking any long position. Also in the daily chart, last week, GLD displayed a bearish headwind possible reversal signal. At that time, there was a memory support line close by. 
Therefore, we wouldn't take any short trade, but we would protect profit in long position in gold using Q protection signal as trailing stop. That would be appropriate trading decision because after that, this week, gold fell down heavily. Once again, the bearish headwind accurately predicted the possible drop in gold right at the very top. Friday's decline was with very high activity. Friday's candle is bearish in shape and also bearish in color. Gold is looking pretty bearish. However, it is already at the lower boundary line. Therefore, following Q technique, we are not going to take a short trade in gold right now. The short opportunity had already passed. You could probably take it on this magenta color candle right near open when price open below the memory support line. You could take a short position at that time using Q intraday real time chart and continue to hold at least partial position as gold kept on dropping for three successive days. Right now gold is oversold that is also shown by the stretch color being in red in the band indicators. Therefore you don't take any long in gold right now and it is oversold therefore you would stay away from initiating new shots. From commodities analysis we move on to market breadth analysis. We are analyzing market breadth using NASDAQ composite index and NYSE composite index weekly charts. Because this is using broad indices and longer term weekly interval, it is to be used more for longer term investment decisions and maybe for swing trading but certainly not for day trading. Both NASDAQ and NYSE is continuing their up move. NASDAQ closed comfortably higher relative to previous week. NYSE was practically unchanged. Both of them broke above the previous peaks so we cannot say they are in downtrend anymore. That is also reflected by the swing band indicators. Both of them turned yellow. NYSE has a memory resistance nearby. You may keep an eye on NYSE composite index to see if it goes to the memory resistance and reverses from there. Both the indices went up for many weeks and even on the weekly charts both of them are overbought. That means on daily charts they will be very overbought. You may be very careful before buying stocks that are also overbought because they went up strongly with the market. If we look at the price extreme band indicator we can see that for both the indices they are now at price extreme high also even on weekly charts. That is yet another reason to be careful and not keep on buying stocks, especially stocks that are technically overbought or fundamentally overvalued. What about the internals? The internals are bullish. All the internals ended in the positive. However, only one of them, up down volume of NYSE, went up from one week ago. All the other internals actually decline. That is giving mixed picture. Why? Because NASDAQ went up much more than NYSE. If that is so, we would expect the NASDAQ internals to be stronger than NYSE. But that is not the case. All the NASDAQ internals decline and for NYSE actually one of them 
went up that is sending conflicting signals and whenever there are conflicting signals in the market it is better to be cautious and probably stay on the sidelines at least not enter many new trades see where the market is going and then make your next trading decision we continue our market analysis with the market ETFs this is S&P 500 ETF SPY weekly is clearly bullish this week's candle color and shape both are bullish however when you look at the daily chart you can see that this week price practically moved sideways didn't go up much the daily as well as the weekly are overbought that is a reason to be careful and not buy overbought stocks nasdaq etf qqq the picture is very similar to spy weekly is going up strongly this week's candle color and shape both are bullish when you look at the daily chart you see prices practically moving sideways it is overbought in daily as well as in weekly chart dow jones etf dia bullish in the weekly chart this week's candle color is bullish but the shape is mixed mixed because it has a solid body that is bearish and it has a long lower tail that is bullish therefore as a whole the weekly shape is mixed in daily again price didn't move much practically remained sideways the relative performance is tilting down showing that it is underperforming the market the weekly is overbought Russell 2000 ETF IWM weekly is bullish this week's candle color is bullish but shape is mixed in the daily chart price didn't go up much didn't come down also this is the only ETF that is still having a support from memory trend line support price is overbought in daily as well as in the weekly chart if you combine the analysis of the market bread and market ETF you see very similar picture market is going up but it is very overbought you may be careful before buying many stocks because the stocks may also be overbought if you are watching the market roundups regularly then you would notice one change in this week's charts the market ETF charts from previous several weeks charts that is many of the ETFs if not all used to have memory trend line support in either weekly or daily and now all of them are broken except for IWM which is still having a daily memory trend line support this memory trend line supports provide robust support and when they are broken it shows that the momentum is reducing price has not dropped therefore there is no short opportunity but the fact that all the memory trend line supports except the one for IWM are now broken they are not on the chart anymore it shows the upside momentum is reducing and you may be careful about your long positions especially the stocks that are technically overbought or fundamentally overvalued or both that is the conclusion you arrive at from market level analysis however market is very broad when you drill down into the sector level and then further into the industry level stock level for both fundamental as well as technical you can always find trading opportunities where the industry strength fundamental strength and technical strength are aligned we call this 360 degrees analysis 
one month sector performance you are looking at 11 sectors across three review periods the red bar represents performance of this week green bar performance of previous week and blue bar performance of two weeks before that together they give you one month of sector performance any bar coming to the right of the zero line shows the sector went up and if the bar is to the left of the zero line it shows the sector went down this week market continued to go up however if you look at the sectors eight of them went down three went up showing a bearish picture at the sector level this is another reason to be cautious about taking many new long positions energy sector declined this week the red bar is to the left of the zero line previous week it was bullish it went up quite strongly by 2.2 percent however it decelerated one week ago looking at that in the last market roundup i cautioned about this sector energy sector this week it indeed declined qh has 107 stocks in the energy sector the average decline of these stocks this week was more than three percent using the qh analysis you could protect profit in existing long positions and look for profitable shots ahead of others once again the sector deceleration could alert you before the sector actually went down that it is becoming weak the sector went up that time but the deceleration was showing that it is starting to weaken and the weakness resulted in an actual drop this week 107 stocks fell by an average of more than three percent this week that is quite a large drop and the sector deceleration could alert you about the possible drop well ahead of time this is another view of sector performance across five day and one day periods over five day period we already saw eight sectors went down three went up on friday that is over one day period the market was quite bullish 10 sectors went up only one went down real estate went down all the others went up on friday friday was bullish however sector is a broad level and day-to-day -day variances may be misleading you may rely more on weekly performance when making investment decisions based on sector level analysis unless you are looking for turnaround candidates this is true for industry level analysis also you may rely more on the five days performance one week performance to assess industry strength and not rely too much on day-to-day -day variances again exception is that when you are looking for turnaround candidates this is a look at the sectors using qh here all the 11 sectors are presented in a heat map and scorecard cyan represents strength and magenta represents weakness looking at the five day period you can see this week's strongest sectors are communication services and consumer discretionary you could see the strength during the week itself in fact in real time and you could make buy decisions based on the strength at the other extreme real estate and materials at the weakest you could protect profit in existing long positions and you could also look for shorting opportunities you could make these trading decisions based on 
sector's strength or weakness. I mentioned about acceleration deceleration of sectors. In previous market roundup, I analyzed based on this scorecard and heat map that energy was decelerating and indeed this week energy is one of the weakest sectors. This acceleration deceleration is shown by the PACE column. PACE 5 day period shows acceleration deceleration over one week. Magenta represents deceleration and cyan represents acceleration. Therefore, you can see consumer staples and communication services at the most accelerating sectors now. Therefore, you could look for buying opportunities in them. What about the decelerating sectors? These are materials and financials. These are the two most decelerating sectors. You would look for shorting opportunities in them. If you combine acceleration and strength, you get communication sector. This is strong as well as accelerating. If you combine weakness with deceleration, then you will find materials. It is weak and it is also one of the most decelerating. You may look for shorting opportunities in materials and you may look for buying opportunities in communications by combining strength as well as acceleration and by combining weakness as well as deceleration. These are the decisions you can make at the sector level. However, like the market is very broad, sector is also very broad. A sector has industries that don't necessarily move together. For example, materials sector has forest products as well as steel as well as gold. There is not much correlation between these industries. Therefore, to make more accurate trading decisions, you may rely on the industry strength and weakness. Best performing industries. These are 10 of the best performers this week. We are looking at their 5 days and 10 days scores. In Q360 degree technique, you are going to align forces from all the levels to your trades. Therefore, you are going to look for only buying opportunities in the best performing industries and avoid shorting. Three weeks ago, in the weekly market roundup on 9th February, I mentioned that consumer discretionary was accelerating and that might give buying opportunities. That analysis using Q Edge was timely. This week, six of the 10 most robust industries are in consumer discretionary. These are department stores, computer and electronics retail, consumer electronics, distributors, apparel retail, and specialty stores. In the same market roundup of 9th February, I mentioned this stock VSI, Vitamin Shop, as a possible buy candidate. VSI was and still is a value stock. I analyzed it in the market roundup on 9th February. The video is available in the YouTube channel of Superior Profit. And the very next day, on Monday, it had given a trend following go with flow long setup on 11th Feb. Since I analyzed the stock on 9th Feb, it is now up by more than 44%. This week, the stock went up by 33%. You could make an easy buying decision in the stock based on the industry's acceleration and strength based on the fundamental 
valuation of the stock in Q Vital stock scorecard, it was and still is a value stock and based on the Q technical go with flow trend following long trade setup that came on 11th February. This was a perfect example of Q360 degrees trade where the industry strength, fundamental strength in terms of valuation and technical strength in terms of a trend following trade setup were all aligned together. Industry scorecard and heat map using QH. Looking at the five day column, you find the best performing industries with cyan color. Specialty stores is one of them. It was weak earlier, then gradually increased strength and the score turned cyan. Drilling down inside the industry, you can find VSI. It still has cyan color score in valuation column, showing that it is a good value stock. It declared earnings and now it has positive earnings for two successive quarters. Since I analyzed the stock, it went up by more than 40% and this week it went up by 33% plus. It has great earnings quality and has a short squeeze potential as well. VSI using at a glance template, Q weekly daily chart template. In the weekly chart, it displayed a bullish headwind at the very bottom. The same bullish headwind possible reversal signal appeared in the daily chart also again at the very bottom. Since then price gradually went up. I discussed the stock in the market roundup three weeks ago and right after that it gave a go with flow trend following long trade setup on this cyan color candle. Since then price went up. It is very bullish on the technical chart. Also fundamentally it is strong. Industry is also strong. Therefore you might book partial profit with discipline. You already have large profit following the analysis of 9th Feb. Q traders would book at least partial profit with discipline and then let profit run probably applying trailing stop with Q protection signal. If you look at the stretch band, the overbought, oversold band indicator, you see it is cyan colored. So the stock is technically very overbought. But that doesn't mean fundamentally it is overvalued. There are other approaches where People just look at technical charts to decide whether a stock is overvalued. In Q technique, we differentiate between them. Technically, we can see VSI is overbought. That is a technical analysis. But when we look at the stock's fundamentals relative to its performance, earnings relative to its PR comparison, we see that the stock is still a value stock. Not only that, it actually has the best possible valuation score of 100. Does it mean we just jump into the stock right now? No, we wait for a low risk buying opportunity. If we already bought the stock on 9th February, we are going to hold partial position. If you didn't take the position at that time, the Q approach would be to wait for a pullback and then the stock to go up again, giving a low risk buying opportunity. By doing that, you are always taking only low risk trades in stocks that are fundamentally strong, technically at a buy point and in industry that is strong as well. Worst performing industries, just like you will look for buying opportunities in strong industries. You will look for shorting opportunities in these weak industries and avoid buying. 
three of the worst performers this week are in the worst performing real estate sector. These are real estate services, diversified rates, and healthcare rates. There are other real estate industries also in QH, and those are also weak. Retail rates is one of them. That is also one of the poor performance this week. And in retail rates, AKR is fundamentally overvalued as per Q vital valuation score. And it is, it was and it still is showing negative earnings growth for successive quarters. Therefore, you had a stock in an industry that is weak the stock itself overvalued in terms of fundamentals with negative earnings growth. Everything was going wrong for AKR and you would look for a shorting opportunity. AKR gave a shorting opportunity, a trend following go with flow short setup on this Monday 25th February that has already covered the risk distance and you could book at least partial profit by Friday, 1st March. In QH, the worst performing industries of the week are shown by magenta color under 5 day score. Several real estate industries are weak, and retail rates is one of them. Retail rates used to be strong earlier, relatively stronger but it is steadily losing strength. The color is magenta now, showing that it is weak. Therefore, you will look for shorting opportunities here. Drilling down, you can find AKR. The valuation score is in magenta color, showing it is overvalued. And earnings growth for several successive quarters. In fact, all the three previous quarters as well as all the three previous years. All the earnings growths were negative. Everything was going wrong for this stock. Weak industry, weak valuation, weak earnings growth and on top of that, earnings quality was and still is in magenta color. The earnings quality score is in magenta color, so earnings quality is also weak. An ideal stock for looking for shorting opportunities. AKR gave that shorting opportunity on this day, this Monday, when it displayed the magenta color candle and price was already starting to go down. That was the signal point for Go with flow short trade setup. You could take a short trade at the close of that day. In Q technique, you don't have to wait for next day. You can take the trade at the close of the market. Stop would be just above recent high. And on Friday, it hit the yellow direction line. It went below that but recovered and closed just on top of the yellow direction line. It covered significant distance since entry, almost same as the risk distance. You could book at least partial profit. The stock is fundamentally weak. Technically, it is pretty weak. The weekly is very bearish. Industry is also weak. Therefore, you didn't have any reason to book full profit. You could continue to hold partial position. The relative performance is also tilting down, showing that it is hugely underperforming the market. Interestingly, if you look back, AKR displayed a bearish headwind at this point. Since then price couldn't go up, it led to a significant price drop. I have discussed several times earlier that when a bearish headwind precedes a price drop, if price comes back to the same level, watermark level at the same price point, then there is a high chance price will drop again at least enough for giving a successful 
short swing trade. The same thing happened here also. Price tried to come to the watermark level around the earlier bearish headwind price level, created a false upside breakout and drop. In the daily also, it displayed successive bearish headwinds that preceded the price drop. Looking at the bearish headwinds in daily, weekly, and the watermark resistance levels, you could start to get ready for a short trade and confidently take it when the go with flow trade setup came on this magenta color candle. Accelerating industries. They may be behind others but starting to gain momentum. These industries often give low risk buying opportunities at the bottom just as the stocks start to recover after a price decline. Biotech is one such industry. In this industry, ALXN Alexian is a value stock as per Q Vital Fundamental Scorecard and it gave a trend following go with flow long setup on 12th Feb that has already hit profit target. I will further demonstrate how to identify buying opportunities from accelerating industries using the live system in the upcoming market meetup webinar. The next market meetup webinar will not be on Monday. We shifted it to Thursday. I will demonstrate this using live system on the next Thursday's market meetup webinar. That is at 8 a.m. Eastern Time on next Thursday. In QH, the accelerating industries are shown by cyan color under paste 5 day column. Biotech is accelerating. Its 5 day score is cyan under paste column. And in fact, 5 day strength score is also cyan. So it accelerated and it is already pretty strong. A good industry to look for buying opportunities. Also so because it used to be weak earlier. The score was magenta in earlier periods. Now it strengthened with acceleration. Biotech has many stocks that are of good value. You know that from the cyan color scores under valuation column. Alexian is one of them, ALXN. It is a value stock and it also has very nice earnings growth for the last three quarters and even last three years. It has accelerating earnings growth for all the last three years as well as last three quarters. Strong industry, accelerating industry, good fundamental valuation, great earnings growth. Everything is going well for this stock and you will look for a buying opportunity. ALXN, which is cyan going up for a long time. In the daily chart, it recovered from the lows and then dipped. That is the time you are going to start looking for buying opportunities after the dip, not when the price is already overbought price was overbought here as it started to go down you would start to look for buying opportunities however you would not buy until a trade setup was confirmed which happened on this cyan color candle the daily chart gave a trend following long trade setup if you were using Q sonar in real time the scan programs in real time you could identify the opportunity during the day itself and take an entry not at the close of the day but even during the middle of the day because fundamentally the stock was very strong both in terms of valuation and earnings growth. The industry was accelerating at that time. The stock went up strongly and pulled back a little bit. Where did it stop? It stopped at the white direction line. However, you don't buy at that time because the traffic light candle color was still red. We would wait for the cyan color candle to come 
and then take a long position confidently we would put stop just below recent low entry price could be in the middle of this candle and as price hit the upper boundary and covered more than profit distance with discipline you would book at least partial profit at the right edge it is closing above the memory resistance in weekly if it was reversing from the memory resistance you would be careful about the remaining position but you can see this week price in fact closed above the weekly memory resistance line you may watch it on monday if price is able to continue to go up then you don't have to be concerned you can continue to hold the remaining position however if price is reversing from the weekly memory resistance and i can see there is a daily memory resistance also then you may be careful however it has daily memory support lines also and those levels are above your entry price so you don't have much to worry you can simply apply trading stop and also see if price is able to break below the memory support lines if they don't do that you can continue to hold and let profit run decelerating industries these were stronger earlier but now losing momentum may or may not be weak yet but at least they are losing momentum the decelerating industries alert you when to book profit in existing long positions and when to start looking for bearish setups at the very top brewers is one of the decelerating industries this week so is hotels resorts and cruise lines looking at the deceleration you may protect profit in sam in brewers industry and nclh in hotels resorts and cruise lines as they are in decelerating industries and also they both are near memory trend line resistance and both fell on friday though friday was very strong day at the market level sam also had a reversal at price extreme at pendulum high on friday and nclh had a false upside breakout at memory resistance on friday after displaying bearish headwind on tuesday you can see several technical weakness in these two stocks there is weakness at the industry level also that is why in my view you may protect profit in an existing long position and you may look for shorting opportunity as well to look for 360 degree shorting opportunity you would also like to see if the stock is fundamentally weak and you can find that out from q vital fundamental scorecard in q edge the decelerating industries are shown by magenta color under paste column brewers is decelerating and hotel resorts and cruise lines is also decelerating their five day score is not deep magenta yet meaning they are not fully weak yet in terms of strength however they were much stronger earlier and this rapid decline in strength is picked up by the deceleration score under base column which is coming in magenta you would protect profit in existing long position and look for shorting opportunities in the latest version of qh we have this selective drill down so i can select brewers and hotel resorts and cruise lines by clicking and then pressing control click on the next industry and click selective drill down this button and that will show me all the stocks in both of these industries here i can see sam in brewers industry and nclh in hotel resorts and cruise lines how are their fundamentals 
NCLH has valuation score in cyan color, so it is fundamentally a value stock. Whereas SAM has valuation score in magenta, so fundamentally it is overvalued stock. Therefore, could we short NCLH as a 360 degree trade? No, its valuation is good and you can see the earnings growth is also positive. So neither in terms of earnings growth nor in terms of valuation, NCLH is a weak stock. If you have a long position, you may protect profit. Technically, you might start to look for a short trade, but in Q360 degrees approach, we would not short NCLH. We would prefer to short SAM because it has industry weakness in terms of deceleration, fundamental weakness in terms of overvaluation, and we can look at the technical charts to see if that is also showing weakness. Let's start with NCLH first. The weekly is going up. This week's candle color is still cyan. However, the shape is mixed. The body is solid, that is bearish, but it has long lower tail, that is bullish. The week's candle shape is mixed. In the daily chart, price is in uptrend. However, it came to the memory resistance line and stopped there displayed a bearish headwind this week and on Friday tried to go above the memory resistance again. The upper tail pierced above the memory resistance but reversed from the memory resistance with a bearish shape candle. There is not enough signal to take a short trade on technical charts but there is enough signal to at least place stop order to protect profit in any existing long position. And we saw the fundamentals are also strong. So we were not going to short NCLH as a 360 degree trade anyway. SAM on the other hand, it is fundamentally weak in a decelerating industry and technical charts are showing weakness. The weekly shows that it displayed a bullish headwind at the very bottom and since then price sharply went up, came close to the weekly memory resistance and this week reversed from there. Didn't touch the memory resistance that would have been even more bearish, came very close to that and reversed from there. In the daily chart also, price displayed several bullish headwind possible reversal signals. The second one caught the very low. From there, price went up. This was earnings week. Price went up sharply on that day. Since then, price was moving sideways. On Friday, it opened higher with a gap up open but closed sharply lower and that happened on a day when the market was very bullish. It displayed a bear release signal. Price was overbought as shown in the band indicator, stretch indicator and then it gave the bear release signal on Friday. The pendulum indicator or price extreme indicator is showing it was at price extreme high and on Friday, it displayed a reversal candle. There are multiple bearish signals in the daily chart. You might not want to take a short trade on Friday because there was no valid Q short trade setup. At minimum, you would protect profit in existing long position because technicals are looking weak. Fundamentally, it is overvalued industry is also decelerating and if the price continues to go down next week you may look for shorting opportunities you would probably look for those using intraday real time chart that would allow you to take very low risk short entry in this stock if only if it continues to go down next week 
those were our regular topics for the weekly market roundup i will not go through the forum posts you may visit our forum it is open to the public and look at the recent or maybe not so recent trade ideas stock analysis that i share here regularly using the same 360 degree analysis that i used in today's webinar as well before i finish let me summarize the market continued to go up this week but it is showing some weakness nasdaq went up it was quite bullish but nyse broad market index practically remained unchanged spy qqq dia iwm all went up they are bullish in the weekly chart but when you look in the daily chart you see all of them were practically moving sideways didn't go up much that is showing that the up move momentum is reducing you can also recognize the reduction in momentum from the fact that most of the memory support trend lines that were in the market ETF charts, they are broken now. Only one is still there, that is in Russell 2000 ETF IWM that shows that IWM is the strongest right now. However, many memories are already broken. Those supports are broken. That is also showing that overall the market is losing momentum. The same fact is further shown from the sector performance eight of the sectors actually declined only three went up market is still up still bullish therefore you may not jump into taking many shots but it is time to protect profit in existing long positions and as you can see whatever be the market conclusion the market level conclusion using the 360 degrees technique you can always align forces from industry fundamental and technical levels to look for both long as well as shorting opportunities when the market is bullish you would do better to take only the long opportunities in strong industry strong fundamental stocks and in stocks that are giving you a Q buy point and when the market tilts down if the market is bearish then you will do better to take only short trades and you will take them in weak industries in weak fundamental stocks and in stocks that are giving you optimal short point using the Q unambiguous trade checklist that is all that i plan to share in today's session thank you for attending i look forward to seeing you in our next session and also in the morning market meeting from this week we are going to have the morning market meeting on thursday instead of monday you may register for that from our education live class menu i look forward to seeing you in that webinar as well Thank you once again, have a great weekend and trade profitably.